Hey everybody, welcome to the first of the online figure drawing. Exciting to have you here. Whoa, dude. You guys mind if I take this call? It's really, I mean, I don't get it very often. Okay, hold on a second. Leo, how are you? It's, hold on, it's Leonardo da Vinci. I haven't talked to him in like 500 years. Who do you got there? Is Michael there? Hey, Michael, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, it's Sheldon. It's Michelangelo. Hey, no, uh, no, 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 you, you keep asking. I think that David looks good. I'm not posing anymore. We have a master draftsman here. I got to study with him for 36 years. I've been saying his name is Glenn Vilpu. Right, yeah, the guy who taught you guys. Oh, they're all, they're all excited because they all studied with Glenn Vilpu also. So that's what we're gonna do right now, you guys. We're gonna take you, we're gonna take you back 500 years and it hasn't changed and you still do the same thing on the computer. The process hasn't changed and I'm gonna show it to you. Um, the supplies I'm gonna start out with, this is a really cool pen and it's made by Pentel. I don't really know the name of it because it's written in another language, but it's a brush pen. And uh, so it's the Pentel brush pen and they come with refills. So you just pop in the new refill, it's really fun. So I'm gonna use this and we're gonna go through a lot of supplies. And then this is just your, everybody knows, your Copic number three cool, okay? Okay, so here we go, one minute poses. Now we've already covered a lot of this information in our lectures. So we'll try to bring, this is your rhythm chart. Head's gonna go forward, so I wanna bring the neck back. And you're gonna use your anatomy in your lay-in. So coming around here is the rhythm. That's your Jeffrey Dahmer training manual and cookbook. So you wanna group your, your anatomy. Rib cage is forward, see that? And of course I'm doing from left to right. Come on down, feel the, nav the navel. Come on down this way, pelvis is forward. Gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, pubic arch. Always thinking proportions the entire time. Okay. Okay, so now still one minute poses, right side. And I'm just gonna draw. So I'm grouping the legs together in one shape. And this is where you get to see your construction. You get to see your block shapes. Like right there is under the popo, which is the technical term for the, the buttocks. Remember, the popo and the woohoo. This is the popo, that's the woohoo, and they are cross gender. Okay. So this pose here, this one's fun. Um, now we're gonna start getting into more of the rhythms, more of the gestures. And we're trying to always think of these things as, as units. You got one unit's the head, then you have the rib cage. Try to find the side planes as much as possible. Group your anatomy, so there's the scapula and the arm. And there you go. Because remember, when you're doing the quick sketch, it's just to get the story down as fast as possible. And, you know, if you want to throw some tone in, you can, but that's going to be just on the side plane. Boom, boom, see from the back. Here's the side plane. And that's all you need for a quick sketch. See that, tells the story.
you got this nice line of action. You guys have heard about lines of action. So that's your line of action right there. Now, the fun thing about doing the quick sketch is you can pull her over. See, now I want to bring the head over more. So we'll go like that. So this would be more of what you would call an animator's rough. And there you go. This one was the left side. Here's the right side. So again, you guys can be thinking about this line of action if you want. Got her weight on this arm. Now, this is all the drawing at one time. This is doing GCAT all at the same time. We start doing the longer poses. I'll start explaining more about what we're doing. Yeah, here's your weight. And there you go, that's all you need for a one minute pose, because this would be like your rough. Okay, this is the left side. We'll go a little smaller now. So even if it's a quick pose, I'm still thinking anatomy. What you guys are gonna find is the more you get into this, the anatomy is your gesture, okay? So right now, I'm not gonna talk about them because we only have one minute, but I'm actually thinking about all of the anatomy right now. And in my mind, I'm naming the muscles. You know, here's patella, patella tendon, gastrocnemius. Okay, vastus, uh, you know, medialis. Maybe just the shape of the head. Okay, now we're moving to the right side. Let's go a little opposite here. I'm gonna put down the Copic first and just go for the silhouette. You can start anywhere you want. Actually, you guys try not to start in the same place on every drawing. You want to mix it up. It's real important. Because, you know, in animation, you're going to have to register your characters. You know, you don't want to have them change the layout because your drawing's in the wrong spot. Also, don't be afraid to change the pose. See here, I've been able to you know, bring the head down a bit. See that? Okay, this one here, you're gonna find uh, her weight is on her arms and on her foot. So remember, when you, you know, I don't really like having my students doing one minute poses. Two is probably the least that I do, the quickest. So if you're doing a one minute pose, you're just trying to get the idea down because the idea is in your mind and uh, you got to try to get it on the paper, but it's usually fairly, um, you know, it's very personal. You know, like, here's my idea. Like an animator's rough. 
you know, even when you're drawing out in public, you have more than a minute, you know, to get a drawing down. But this gives us the gesture, which is the story. Gesture is story. I think when you get rid of the term gesture, I think it's too, too complicated for the students. They're like, how do you spell that again? Um, what's the story? And that's what we're doing right now. There's your story. That's all we need. Okay? And that's it. Here's your weight. There's your graphic footprint. All right, this is kind of a classic pose. I'm going to have some fun with it, though. I'm going to change it a bit. Here's your shoulder. I'm going to bring her head down. I'm going to give her a ponytail. Show some drama. There we go. Just get the story down. Okay, here's the left side. Now with two minutes, we have a little bit more time to start thinking through this thing. When does your shoulder grow out of your nose? When it does. See, we're starting to look. You don't want to copy the model, but you do want to look. And you're looking for, uh, like, negative space, different, uh, all the stuff that you've been taught. Okay, so things to think about, negative space here, rhythms, of course, negative space, and then the graphic uh, footprint. Done. All right, moving on to the right side. All right, so we're going with the shape of the head. Sternocleidoid and mastoid muscles, real important. Take us down here. Keep the head forward, you guys, okay? 
people always ask me, why, you know, what's stiffening up my pose? And it's the fact that, you know, they have the head going straight up. Okay, so only nerds have their heads going straight up. And don't be afraid to change the pose. People ask, you know, how do you change a pose? What does that mean? There's a natural flow. There's a flow to nature, flow to music. There's things that flow. And if you start changing that flow, then it stiffens up the drawing. Okay. So I know that you guys study with my teacher who is Senior Vilpu, um, and he always says that he, you know, he changes the pose a lot. It's because we're animators. Now, if I'm doing a portrait, you know, it's weird. Even when you do a portrait, you change, you change the model a bit. You know, you want to try to flatter them a bit. But you see how this has this kind of rhythm to it? That's what we're looking for. That's the key, okay? You know, if you want to put in your tone, that's just to hit the side planes. And if you go back to my fundamentals videos, you'll, you know, you know what the side plane is. Okay? So that's that one. They're real fast. Okay, if you're gonna do a pose like this, you wanna be thinking more shapes. So this would be a shape land. So if you go back to my the videos, we're talking about the different lands. This would be a shape land. So I'm just looking to see what grows out of what, everybody. So you got that flow. Now the next thing would be the next shapes. The scapula. Yeah, the chest. Where does it transition? How does it fit right here so it fits? There's your flow. That's it. You know, if you want to throw some tone in, you can. But again, your tone's on the side planes. This is a zig pen. They come with holders. This is the refill. You know, I just draw right with the refill. All right, so this is a two minute pose. And here you want to draw, you know, just draw a straight line. And keep everything off that straight line. So we're going to push it. We're going to bring the rib cage this way. And then we're going to have the pelvis this way. Weights under the the nose. Here's your Cal State Cool, your rhythms. I'm going to change this, bring it like that, just because. The whole story on this one is going to be the shoulders. Now, right now, you guys are probably saying, how do you hold the pen? 
How do you hold this pen? How do you hold the pencil? Really, it's any way you want. Just draw from your shoulders. Um, one of the things, like right now, I'm looking a lot at my reference because you guys are also looking at it. It's like, oh, no, what am I going to do? What if I'm slightly off? Um, look mostly at your drawing. Don't look too much at the model because then you'll find yourself copying the model. And when you copy the model, the drawing gets stiff. You want the drawing to have rhythm. Okay. Okay, this is a fun pose. She has kind of a triangle shape. This is the, the right side. You can actually, if you want to, start with a triangle. You just fit her inside. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about, we're going to start for our education here now that we're starting to warm up a little bit. We draw for a reason. If you just want to draw for yourself, that's wonderful. That's great. But the professional artist draws for a reason. If you're an animator, you're acting. If you're storyboard, you're doing your boards. You know, you're, you're plotting out the film, the layouts, designing the stage. Um, I work in uh, homicide forensics. I'm reconstructing. And a lot of what I do comes from a lot of reading, a lot of studying, and then I have to see it in my mind. So that's going to get a little weird for you guys because I study and I read. I read depositions. I look at autopsies, autopsy photos. And then what I have to do is I have to draw it. So at that point, I can see the actual homicide in my mind happening in real time. And then I draw it. So all the stuff that we're learning right here Whereas you might show this in a portfolio, it's really so that you can get your job done. And then later on, you know, I could finish this drawing and spend, you know, 20 hours on it. But this is all I need. And, it, and also it fits inside this triangle shape, which is also really, really important. You don't, you know, walk into Disney's office and say, hey, you know, Walt, Really not into this uh, odd number, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I want Snow White and the Six Dwarves. And he'll say, that's fine, there's the door. Okay? So we draw for a reason. And in this case, it's just to get it down and fit inside. Okay, this one is a really difficult pose, everybody. But it's a two-minute pose. You think of shapes. And just what grows out of what? Hands growing out of her ear. Scapula. Neck. Shoulder. Arm. Arm. Texture. I want to get to that rib cage shape as fast as possible. See where it turns, which is right there. Make sure your shapes are clean. Okay, now here, the leg is growing out of her arm right there, which would bring her hip right here. Find those side planes, which is right there. There you go. And if you want, you can come in with a little bit of uh, gray to find those side planes. That's shadow. Light's coming this way. Let 
There we go. It's a quick sketch. Okay. Okay. Now take a look at this one, everybody. This is a five. It's a really pretty pose. I'm going to start with the hair way back here, and I'm going to work my way forward. Okay, scapula. And these are landmarks. You memorize them. That's all. We'll get into it in the figure drawing classes a lot. Do the rib cage first, then put on the, the breasts. And gravity, flat, shows the mass and the weight. Side plane. You see me working the whole drawing at the same time. Keep the drawing together. All right, now we're going to start playing. This is texture. This is texture. And we're going to hit the side planes. And then we're going to put in a shadow. The edges on the side plane will give it the form. This is called Copic's drying out fast. Pisses me off. There we go. This drawing's done. Maybe a portfolio drawing right there. And um, just want to get enough to tell the story. You know, know what you're doing. Sometimes you don't want to go any further because then you have to do the same thing on the whole drawing. You know, if I added any more, then I got to add everything. So, okay. So I'm going to hit some cores. I can add more halftone, but I'm going to have to do that on everything. The halftone's on the turning planes. Now, if you can, if you add too much of these, it will come to what Vilpu calls a hairy drawing, and you want to be careful. I have Glenn Vilpu in my head all the time. I even, when I got, when I left art and went into business, went into sales. Even though Glenn didn't know the sales at the level that I was doing it, um, I had his voice in my head all the time. And he called it the pragmatic approach to, to drawing, which was the having a procedure. 
And that has stayed with me my entire life. I met Glenn when I was 19. I'm 54. I work in forensics, and I'm still following the process. So we all want to thank Vilpu for teaching us and helping us, not to mention Bill Perkins, who has changed my life. This is a gorgeous pose. So we're going to stay with the same medium, but since we ran out of our Copic, I'll move to a warm. This is a warm Copic. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the seventh C7 on the vertebrae right there. It's on the neck. Sternocleidomastoid muscle here. Mandible. Cranium. I'll leave it alone because you might, might want to change the shape. If you're having trouble with the proportions of the figure, you change the, sh the size of the head. So leave the head to the last. Scapula, teres major, teres minor, latissimus dorsi, pectoralis, mammary gland, mammary gland. You do have a line from nipple to nipple. Next time you take a shower, take a look, it's there. And if you put your arm up in the air, you will see that line move. Okay, so we go here, rhythm, rhythm. All right, coming around here will be our back muscles, sacrospinillus, trapezius. This comes around here, which is your serratus anterior to your external obliques to your anterior iliac crest, posterior iliac crest, gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Straight line for the tensor, even though you don't see it, pull the line out for your quads, IT band, gastrocnemius, patella tendon, vastus lateralis. Let us not forget the important Gluteus maximus, gluteus band, which mine stopped working years ago. I got pulled over on the way down here today. It's almost a true story. Turned out my gluteal band was uh, flying out of the back seat of my car, the back window. The officer said, what is that out of your window? I said, oh, officer, it's my gluteal band. It doesn't work anymore. It just follows me wherever I go. Here we go, same thing there. Coming down this way. Got that arm. Then we'll bring the head down here now. And there you go. Now we tie this together with rhythms. So here we go. It's all about the rhythm. The people out there know their anatomy. They take anatomy classes but it doesn't help the drawing. This marker is going out too. for the core
and she's now laying on the ground. Hi. Are you depressed? Are you feeling down about your drawing? Are you looking at your figure drawing and seeing still lifes? Push the button on your screen. Go to New Masters Academy where you will find the answers. Where you'll be able to put the information. Knowledge opens the door for your creativity to come out. So don't be depressed, let us help you. Come on over.